is not a is not best described as a search for truth about reality. Nor is science best described as a problem-solving activity with instrumental ends. Nor is science best described as the knowledge paradigms that characterise science in any particular discipline at any particular time. Rather, he said, science is best described as a certain professional ethos, as a way of going about the construction of knowledge. What is this ethos? He said it's characterised by a number, a number of points here. Universalism the, 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 is the first one. And by universalism, um, what he, he means something different to the way I've been using it um, up to date. Uh, what he meant here is that the, that the claim does not depend upon the identity of the person making the claim. In, uh, to quote him, it does, the claim does not depend upon race, nationality, religion, class or the personal qualities of the person making the claim. The claim stands on its own two feet as a claim. He, he, he argued that that's a characteristic of the scientific uh, pursuit, that it is the claim is impersonal. Now, you'll note that this is very ideal. It's very idealistic. You'll note that claims made by some people carry a lot more weight than claims made by other people. Claims made by a professor with a Nobel Prize are different to claims made by a junior PhD student. It's obvious, isn't it? So Merton here is talking in an ideal sense. He's talking about a scientific ideal more than a scientific reality. But the scientific ideal is carried forth in a number of important ways. For example, in most, sci most natural sciences, the scientist attempts to write him or herself out of the picture. It's not acceptable in most disciplines to, ref to say, I discovered that such and such, or I did this, or I did that. Right? The use of the personal pronoun is not acceptable. In most natural scientific disciplines, you must always use the, always use the passive voice and the impersonal, as though it's, the scientist had nothing to do with it. It really is just nature speaking. It really is just the objective truth here. It's not what I'm saying. You know, it's what happened in the test tube. It's what happened in the petri dish. It's what happened when I ran the computer. What happened when the computer code ran? You don't even say what happened when I ran the computer code. Okay, so it's carried forth there. It's also carried forth in blind peer reviewing, which is again normative in most scientific disciplines. Papers get sent out for review, and the reviewer doesn't know the identity of the person who wrote the paper. And the person who wrote the paper does not know the identity of the reviewer. That is an attempt at Merton's uh, to institutionalise and materialise Merton's uh, universalism. Um, communism. Uh, communism, he, he's not referring, of course, to Mao Zedong or Karl Marx, Russia and so forth. What he refers to there is that the product of science, the knowledge that science generates, is communally owned, not privately owned. It's owned by science. It's owned by everybody, not just, not just somebody. That the originators of a theory or a scientific, you know, or, or some scientific area uh, can claim credit uh, for that and will be given credit for that, but they must put their work out into the public 
for everybody to be able to access and everybody to be able to use, and they cannot determine how it will be used. They must allow it to be criticised. They must allow it to be amended and changed and, and altered and built upon. So it, it's public property. Science is public property, you know, according to the Merton's ideal. Now, again, you're very, you, you, I'm sure in all of your minds you're thinking, but what about patents that we take out? But what about private research, which is subject to intellectual property rights? And so much of research today is conducted not by public institutions like the University of Colombo, but it's conducted by private institutions like ICI, ExxonMobil and, and what have you, who, um, all of whom put far more money into scientific research than public institutions do. So again, uh, the Merton's idea of um, communism in science falls short of the ideal. But still it survives in some places. There are public access journals that are free and are made freely available. Um, public libraries try to make this freely available. The internet has been a great resource for Merton's uh, communism. Uh, the internet has made data much more widely available than used to be the case. So, in my university's, my university rules that all of my work and all of my data, subject to ethics clearance, must be put in the public domain. And it's part of my job to put all of my work free of charge in the public domain. I do that through the internet. And the data goes into data repositories and other workers, other researchers are able to access those data repositories and are able to access and use my data for whatever purpose they wish. Um, Massachusetts Institute of Technology has got exactly the same policy. M many universities around the world have got uh, th this same policy in, in order to try to hold back the forces of uh, privatisation of knowledge, I guess. Disinterestedness is, um, is the third one here where <clears throat> scientists are asked to remove their personal interests from their work, remove their personal interests from their findings. They're expected to report results fully, even if the results don't support the theory that they want it to support, even, even though... Um, uh, uh, e even though it may or may not um, advance their career you know, to, to publish these results, uh, the ideal is that they will, that, is that they will do so. Um, it should rule out scientific fraud, of course. People, uh, you, you know, scientific fraud, of course, is very um, poorly regarded, perhaps even more more so than fraud in the business community is poorly regarded uh, and, and, and it's heavily sanctioned. So the, the ideal of disinterestedness uh, li lives on uh, in, in that sort of way. Although you know and I know of many...